Hi, I'm Joab Freund. And I'm Matthew Elkert. We would like to show you a project that we've been working on. Our goal in this project is to personalize the student experience in online learning systems using machine learning methods. So we began this fall with a course we taught in probability and statistics. We used this web work system, which is put out by the Mathematical Association of America, um, which allows instructors to compose problems using some blend of Markdown and LaTeX, uh, give the answers to these problems uh, in something like LaTeX, uh, but it allows functions and other kinds of uh, expressions. It has its own language. Uh, and then it takes what the, what the instructor gave, produces these nicely laid out problems, uh, and allows students to enter, enter expressions, evaluates them, and checks them against the answer. So here's an example. How many strings of six lowercase English letters are possible? So the student sees lowercase English letters. Okay, well, 26. So the student checks the answer. And red means that uh, the answer the student gave wasn't right. So the student tries again. Uh, 26 to the 6. And this time, the student would be right. And now he or she can move on to the next problem part. Like many others, this system is static. It doesn't adapt to student strengths, weaknesses, or the expressions entered by students. So we think there's a lot to be gained in identifying just the right times to help students in just the right way. We'll call these teaching moments, and we'll give hints or illustrate concepts that will guide the student in the right direction. We hope that by identifying teaching moments and giving a student just the right hint or conceptual explanation at that moment, we will both save students time, and more importantly, Teach them a concept when they're attentive and eager to learn it. To identify these teaching opportunities, we analyzed the log files that were generated by WebWork. 162 students over the course of a quarter generated around 80,000 problem part attempts. So an attempt is one expression entered by a student into a box. This could be incorrect or correct. Uh, it's still an attempt. So this is one attempt. The student enters this and then types, you know, or clicks check enter. So we have 80,000 of these attempts. Um, so 80,000 expressions entered over time by students. So in this log file, this is what a part of the log file would look like. We would have an attempt for each line. So an attempt contains information like the timestamp, uh, the student ID, so who is the student, the assignment and problem, whether the student was correct or not, and the expression entered for each part of the problem. We tried a variety of methods to find and classify the teaching opportunities. And one of the most effective we found was to plot the, the activity of a student as a function of time. So this is an, uh, these are some plots that we generated for the third assignment uh, and the first problem of that assignment. So this problem has 50 parts, 50 text boxes, which is quite a few. Um, so this problem is about poker. It has like a number of questions about poker hands. And so there are lots of questions you can ask about po poker hands. And so this student here uh, spent 30 minutes total. Uh, this is in one sitting. This student spent 30 minutes answering pretty much all of the 50 parts. So the student didn't struggle for more than you know, six minutes on any part, with the one exception being part 24, where the student struggled a bit. Uh, and actually didn't end up answering it correctly. So we can look at a lot of these plots and uh, try to characterize the student's answering style based on uh, this plot. So here we see a student who uh, went through these parts in order like the previous student, uh, struggled a bit more. So the student struggled for like 20 minutes on a part. Uh, and then eventually got to some later parts that he or she struggled on for a while and eventually got up and left. We can look through these plots and see different student answering styles. But there's one pattern in these plots where we believe teacher intervention would be the most effective. A repeated attempt at a part. So here we see a student who for over 20 minutes attempts to answer this one part and then eventually succeeds. We see even more extreme cases where the student tried for over an hour uh, to answer one problem part and then eventually, eventually succeeded. So if we had an instructor come in at around 60-something minutes 
and explain a concept that would help the student attack this problem, the student would be eager to learn this concept. We decided to dig deeper into one of these sessions where a student attempted a part over a period of time. Here we're showing such a session from fall 2012. This question is asking the student to count the number of one pair of poker hands. The part the student is stuck on asks the student to count the number of ways to choose the ranks of the three remaining cards, assuming that the rank of the pair has already been chosen. So let's say we've chosen the rank of the first card. Let's say we've chosen 10. The number of ways to choose the ranks of the remaining cards is the number of ways to choose three ranks from a set of 12. So the student is struggling with this problem, uh, and we want to guide the student through. The student starts off with 11 times 10 times 9. This answer has two parts that need to be fixed. So one of them is the 11. The student doesn't need a deep conceptual explanation to understand why they should use 12 instead of 11 in this expression. A short, directed question should do the trick and get them on the right track again. There's another part that the student uh, might be having trouble with, which is a deeper concept, which is permutations versus combinations. Uh, this is really counting the number of ways to select three, three ranks from the set of 12 ranks, where the ordering of these ranks that you've chosen matters. So where king, jack, ace is different from jack, king, ace. It'll help the student next time to go through step by step and really explain them to them in detail why, uh, why they should be looking at combinations instead of permutations. So the student tries and tries again. Uh, this is in the original session. This is what a student actually did. So the student tried for uh, nine minutes so far, and the student kept trying for a good 30 minutes. Here's how we imagine the session will be using our new system. So the student makes the first try, 11 times 10 times 9. And then the system recognizes this, it sees the 11, and it sees this is similar to 12 times 11 times 10. Um, so we'll show later that the system can recognize this, and it'll show hints accordingly. So assume the rank of the pair is 10. How many possibilities are for the rank of one of the other cards? So here it's asking a directed question to help the student with what we said was the first point that needed to be made, which is they should be looking at 12, not 11. There are really 12 ranks to choose from left. So this is a directed question. Uh, it's very specific. And if the student doesn't get it, we can just give them the answer. Uh, this is the same as a you know, teacher or instructor looking over the student's shoulder and saying, well, there are really 12 ranks left, not 11, right? So the student gets it. Let's say we help them with that. And now this is the important concept to get. So we're asking whether the student has thought of this distinction between uh, whether the student has thought of the ordering of these cards and whether they should correct for that. So let's say the student gets this concept. So the student gets that um, they should be looking at the order and accounting for that in their answer. And let's say the student definitely gets that the cards need to be distinct. Well, they gave these answers. So they probably get that the cards need to be distinct. Um, so the student gets these properties of the answer, but doesn't get the answer. So here's a good moment, a moment where we've really, uh, we've identified that the student understands uh, the properties of the answer, that the ordering of the cards doesn't matter, um, but and is entering the wrong expression. So here we can just guide them to the right expression. Uh, so next time, when they encounter the situation, they can get to the right answer. So we're, we're going to help them correct for uh, the number of ways to rearrange these three cards. So since all the permutations are counted as one choice, uh, you're overcounting. That's what we're saying. So this is how much you're overcounting by. Uh, and you should divide by this amount. <clears throat> so the next time they see a problem like this and they write this expression, they can just divide by the number of ways to permute the cards, or the number of ways um, to permute these possibilities that they've chosen, and get the right answer. Thank you for watching. Uh, we hope you found it interesting. There's much more to say about the machine learning side of this, so stay tuned for later videos. Thanks. Bye.